Glad you are tuned in. This is my Africa Channel Television, broadcasting from the Ronald Reagan Building here in Washington, D.C. I am Daniel Ofori Boafo. The G8 and G20 Summit has just been rounded off in Toronto, Canada, and my Africa Channel TV was there to do a full coverage of the entire event. Interestingly, seven African heads of states were there for the summit on the invitation from the host country, Canada. However, permanent African representative at the summit over the years, Ethiopian Prime Minister Mele Zenawi, as usual, led the group of African leaders to the summit. My TV was able to get the Ethiopian Prime Minister for an exclusive interview conducted by Menelik Zaleka, Mac TV president at the Sheraton Hotel in Toronto, venue of the summit. Over to you, Menelik. This is Menelik Zaleka. We are here at location here in Toronto, Canada, following the G20. We're broadcasting you for My Africa Channel TV. We're here today because there is the G20 and G8 has been here in Canada, Toronto, for the last three days. It has been a long three days of different changes that has been discussed here at the G20. Now the G20 history goes back to 1999. And as we have moved forward beyond that, we have had many different changes in our e economics. Our economy of major proportions has affected major countries throughout the globe. Here as the concept has been formed and formalized on the G uh, for the G20, is to help the developing countries and smaller countries to move forward. We have a very important guest here today with us, speaking as the voice of Africa. Welcome, Prime Minister Meles Zanawi. The Prime Minister just had gone through an election in Ethiopia, which was most favorable. But we are trying to also understand why that we are not receiving the kind of support from the major countries that they are providing to other countries. Prime Minister, can you tell us, as you were a spokesperson in regards to the G20 that was in Pittsburgh, have we gone any further from Pittsburgh to today's forest developing uh, of Africa? I think we have made a lot of progress since uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, the uh, uh, initiative of uh, President Obama with regards to food security that he had announced at the G8 uh, summit in L'Aquila in Italy uh, was reconfirmed by the G20. And uh, that uh, program has now been uh, operationalized. Um, in addition to that, uh, the, uh, in Pittsburgh, the main agenda was how to rebalance global growth. Uh, and in that context, uh, we raised that Africa should be, be part of that rebalancing of global growth. Shouldn't be, Africa should not be treated as, um, as a basket case or the lost case. Uh, it's part of the solution uh, to the problems of economic development <coughs> globally. That has now been uh, uh, that has now become uh, official uh, G20 policy. Uh, we will be endorsing uh, a new framework for uh, development and engagement between Africa and the G20 in Seoul in uh, November. Um, and uh, finally, uh, we uh, began to participate in the G20 meetings at the initiative of the hosts of those meetings. First time we participated was in London. Uh, because the then Prime Minister of the United Kingdom uh, invited us. We wanted to institutionalize this. We didn't want this to be um, uh, at the discretion of each uh, host of the G20 summit. We wanted to get that here in Canada, and I believe we got that. So since Pittsburgh, uh, we made quite a lot of progress. And 
as you have indicated that there has been some progress, but how is it that we continuously to be invited instead of having a seat for Africa that speaks for Africa? We know that uh, we have the body of the AU African Union, and we know that there are the basic is initiatives that is in Africa, whereas all of the sources of resources are in Africa. We know that uh, there are countries and co that is going to Africa and becoming very financially independent, but seeming like still they are leaving Africa out. 2005, that the a the um, the G20 had allocated over $50 billion for Africa development. However, uh, and sm uh, smaller countries rather, and they have not yet kept their promise short of $10 billion. Where are we in regards to having a seat at the table? I think it was sp spoken uh, at G8 uh, by the Nigerian president, uh, President uh, Jonathan uh, Goodluck that we should have a table at the, uh, at, uh, a seat at the table in regards to the affairs of going forward in uh, our perspectives of Africa. Uh, again, as I said, uh, when we started out uh, in London, uh, the G20 summit in London, uh, we were invitees. Um, this time around in uh, Toronto, uh, we were given two seats and we were allowed to participate at all levels uh, of the uh, process of the G20 uh, summit. Now, what we wanted to get from this summit is that the African Union itself gets to determine who speaks for uh, Africa. And we got that. We got that now here in Toronto. And so as of Toronto, by, let's say, the next meeting, which is going to be in Seoul, uh, we'll be there, uh, not uh, by the grace of uh, uh, the country that is inviting us, but as a matter of right. Uh, so that is a major progress. With regards to the um, resources that were uh, promised in uh, 2005 at the G8 summit in Glen Eagles, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, one of the things that, uh, as you know, uh, prior to the G20 summit, there was a G8 summit here. And, and I, I participated in that meeting too. And uh, we uh, were able to review the performance of both sides of this contract. It's a sort of a contract between Africa and the G8. So we reviewed how Africa was doing in terms of fulfilling its own obligations and how the G8 uh, was doing in terms of fulfilling its own obligations. Uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, the G8 has made some progress, but not enough. Um, and so uh, the, I believe there is an understanding now that uh, uh, first we should be able to do better next time around. And second, instead of reviewing performance every 10 years or so, we should be able to review our performance every year or so, so that uh, we can identify shortcomings in terms of fulfilling obligations in time uh, and to be able to correct them in time. We see that Ethiopia market economically is growing faster than primarily uh, many throughout the developed world as well as those of the uh, undeveloped world has been uh, recorded that Ethiopia GDP has risen over 11 percent within the last five uh, quarters, or five years. At any rate, uh, we, we also we're, we're concerned about other African countries. Um, we know that all the resources that is uh, when the Chinese is entering to Africa and the United States and others are going to Africa uh, more or less providing uh, support and uh, loaning money to Africa. They're going to also re uh, benefit from those resources by purchasing or bringing out the raw material, like Euter Oil, for example, use the uh, Liberians uh, connections to build their force of rubber and their turns return back and sell it to Africa. Ethiopia is doing fantastic for its economics. It's, I just left the country uh, about two months ago, and I see, I, I was looking, and uh, I was there five years ago. I turned around, and I was there again to sign the contract to bring ETV for uh, the United States. 
uh, which is uh, very well successful, uh, as we have to uh, say state also. But as I see things, I look at the highways and the development that's coming into the country, the new AU building that's coming up. What are we developing or why are we we're looking at this success? How can we uh, count the success that's coming into Ethiopia and most of the other countries of Africa is still uh, seem like they're going backwards? Well, <coughs> um, luckily uh, we in Ethiopia are doing very well. Uh, we've grown at uh, double digit rates uh, for seven years now. Uh, and that's among the highest in the world. Um, not all African countries are doing well, um, partly because of lack of stability. Uh, at times it could be a matter of policies that are put in place. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do at the G20 summit here is to develop a common framework, a common policy framework uh, that would guide both Africa and the G20 uh, in terms of transforming Africa into a new growth pole. Africa is, is a continent of a billion people. Uh, if it were to grow as fast as, let's say, Ethiopia is growing, uh, we could in no time be as important as, say, India in the global economy. And that's what we meant when we say uh, Africa should be considered as a part of the solution uh, rather than merely as part of the problem. Uh, and, and given this uh, uh, new framework that we are working on, I'm sure uh, the rest of the continent, those who are not doing as well, uh, will catch up.